Well, the world has been mesmerized by the development of the geopolitical conflict. The hidden conflict is underway in cyberspace. Who runs the internet? Because the perception of the security of cyberspace while talking about internet governance. Dr. Glenn Watcher provides a historical understanding of internet governance, describing and discussing six waves of internet development and the differences between the internet in the past and the internet we have today. Internet started uh, in the 1950s and 60s as a military research project under the uh, Department of Defense in the United States. It was the DARPANET which uh, paved the way for what later became uh, the, the, the internet. And uh, when uh, the Tensions between Soviet Union and the United States of America were reduced a little bit by negotiations in the end of the 50s. Uh, the whole research project moved into the hands of the academic community and it was the academic community which did build the internet with all the technical protocols like TCP IP or the domain name system or the ad in our email. All this was developed in the 70s and 80s. So at this time, nobody had any clue that the uh, internet will become uh, uh, a factor for business. While the invention of the World Wide, the internet development moved into the commercial sector, and this was the dot-com boom in the 1990s. Since the internet became a big business, it's understandable that the policy launched to march in. ICANN was established in 1998 as an organization to develop specific technical internet policies for the domain's IP addresses and internet protocols. And then we had the World Summit on the Information Society organized by the United Nations, which produced the Internet Governance Forum. Regarding the 2020s, Dr. Glenn Watcher observes an arms race. The militarization that the internet is pulled into geostrategic conflicts, where cyber attacks are an integrated component in the military debate. What we see is that the internet is a risk factor for world peace. So we see an exploding cybercrime, fake news and hate speech, and the militarization of the cyberspace. So what has happened? that we move from the promise of digital democracy to the risks of a cyber war. What has changed? So uh, I have three elements here which give an explanation what has really changed. The first thing is that internet governance isn't anymore a technical problem with some political implications. It's now a political problem with a technical component. So, and that means all the problems we have in the political sphere are now also in the cybersphere. So, this is uh, unavoidable. The second thing is the internet, as any other instrument, can be used for the good and misused for the bad. So, a knife is a good thing. You, you need it for your steak, but you can kill a person. And so, probably, uh, this was underestimated by the founding fathers because they expected that only the good guys will use the internet. And now we have realized that also the bad guys are using the internet because the internet is an instrument and nothing else. And the uh, third point, what has changed in the last 25 years is that the U.S. isn't anymore the only big player in cyberspace. Dr. Glenn Watcher points out clearly that this is a new complexity which is challenging for all stakeholders since we have a multi-power like China, Russia and other countries play in cyberspace and no one has the total power to determine the rules. In the 50s, it was communism versus capitalism, the US versus the Soviet Union, and what we have now is a democratic internet and autocratic internet. For instance, there is the United States style and Chinese style democracy when we discuss internet governance. 
Today we have China with its digital Silk Road, which tries to export the Chinese model of the internet governance. And the um, Western countries uh, react with uh, the uh, with their concept, which is uh, color revolutions or whatsoever support of uh, stakeholders in uh, other countries. So we have also a similarity uh, if it comes to the military. So we have the um, uh, we had a nuclear arms race in the 1950s. And now we have an arms race in cyberspace with autonomous weapon systems and you see also in the Ukraine war, the drones. Although internet governance and geopolitics seem highly interconnected, Dr. Glenn Watcher personally remains optimistic about the future of the web. The United Nations has proposed a roadmap for the digital corporation. This is a way to moving forward regardless of all the differences we have. Uh, and the most probable scenario, in my view, is a mix of confrontation and cooperation. So some elements from the uh, slide where I, from the worst case scenario, will become reality. And I hope that some elements from the best case scenario will become also a reality. So that means this is what I call the mix of confrontation and cooperation. So I remember more than 10 years ago when Bill Clinton addressed the ICANN meeting in San Francisco. Uh, it was very interesting uh, when Clinton said, okay, we had been, when I became president, we had no real clue what the internet will be, but uh, we were, for us it was clear, this will be a big thing and uh, we have to test it out and to discover new territory and uh, this concept was so we have to stumble forward um, as long as it's forward it's okay last but not least dr glenn watcher suggests that stumbling forward and trial and error are probably the right concepts which means there will be no final solution to clarify the issue forever. With this concept, we can do some good things in the years ahead until 2025 and expect the outcome in the coming future.